But it wasn't until probably like eight to 10 funds in that I was like, oh, light bulb moment. I should have been doing this from the beginning. And had I done it, it would have been so much clearer. Okay, welcome back, guys. This is video four, Vina. We're moving right along in the Masterclass series here. I hope you guys are really enjoying this. I certainly am. This has been such an amazing experience. I love the flow. I love the conversation. I love yes. the stories. Really breaking down f fund and you know, capital raisability. Is that a word? Ca I can be now. <laughs> we can make it a word. Okay. So that is our topic today is about your investor avatar. Yes. Yes. Now, when I first heard you talk about this, I thought to myself, wow, I, I thought like money raising was just like, hey, let's find rich people. That was yeah, okay. It, right? I let's mean, that's a people. broad overarching concept. Yes. Yeah. But what you've done is you've said, no, it really matters the type of investor, mm -hmm. the class of investor or group of investor yes. that you're going to target as people that you go to and talk to about raising money. When you're raising capital, right? If you speak to everybody, you speak to nobody. Hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's Meaning if you're so broad, it's like saying it's like saying to somebody, I'm looking for a deal. And then yeah. they don't even know what to do. Exactly. That's way too that broad. You're not speaking to anybody. You're not explaining to anybody what you actually are looking for. So what you need to do, and this is actually, I think something, if I had known this when I first started, it would have shaved years off of my learning curve. Because when I first started, what most people do is go, I need to find rich people. Yeah. It's like, okay, then what? And what, what happens is yeah. you're, remember in our private mastermind, when we were talking with our group, a lot of it came down to filtering out things that don't work fast, right? And so when you're raising capital from investors, you want to filter out investors that are not going to work fast. And that's people that do not understand the vision, are never going to invest with you, don't want to invest with you, don't want to be in this asset class, whatever it is, or they're not accredited or they're not sophisticated, right? So there's many reasons why you would have investors in deals, but you need it narrowed so that you can speak directly to them, right? Okay, so let's let's use an example of two different investors and how we would speak to them differently. Okay, okay so if your avatar, and this is my avatar because of where I started and you know what my circle looked like and what my access looked like when I first started. And so my investor avatar was a physician family because my husband's a physician. So it's someone I'm speaking to that's very similar to mm -hmm. me, right? So it's a physician family. They're usually married, maybe have a couple of younger kids. Their major concerns are taxes because they're high income W-2 earners. Mm -hmm paying for college for the kids, right? Because that's an important goal education. for them. Yes, yep. it's an important goal for them. And also financial freedom so that they're not taking call constantly, right? Because physicians have very high stress jobs. So this is my investor avatar. And pa very passive probably. Is that yes, they're you know? very passive. And they don't have the time to vet a whole ton of deals. So they want a couple of deals. And they're very conservative by nature. Right, because physicians are trained. They spend their whole lives training to not like kill somebody, right? Yeah. Like the stakes are different when you're a physician and you make a mistake than when you're in real estate and you make a mistake. Yeah. So this is my investor avatar. So when I'm talking to them, I'm immediately talking to them about the tax benefits of being invested in large multifamily assets, right? Then I'm talking to them about gaining financial freedom. How great would it be if you can operate two days a week because that's all you want to operate? Right. And now you're putting them in the mindset and the perspective of like, oh, I didn't realize that this was possible. And so now you're changing the conversation. You're giving them the opportunity to imagine what it would be like to practice medicine on their own terms. Mm. And I'm going to be talking to them about, hey, this can pay for college education. So you, you, what my parents did was they invested my sister and my college fund into real estate so that by the time we were ready to go to college, they had assets that would pay for college and that, and they ended up taking out student loans because debt was so cheap back then that it, they wanted to continue leveraging and they understood the power of leverage. But this is something that you can say to a physician family, like, Hey, let me help pay for your kid's college. Right. So now you're speaking directly to what matters to, their, to them. What's important. Yeah. And, but what you're saying is it's not just about 
you know, when you talk to an investor, find the thing that's important. What you're actually saying is build an avatar around that type of investor correct so that you can go to more people just like that exactly and you can perfect it because every it's a muscle every yeah. time you exercise this muscle the stronger it gets right so when you're speaking to a hundred physicians or physician families by the hundred and first you're you know. so much better than yeah. the first 10 you spoke to and it's probably a leverage thing too right because hey we have a lot of you yes. already here exactly so this is for you mm -hmm. jerry Right. And now it becomes personal and becomes a personal investment. Is it, is it powerful to say, let's say you're talking to a doctor to say, hey, and Dr. So and so is in the fund. Absolutely. And these other doctors Always. are in the fund. Always. Because now they're thinking, okay, my peers are doing this. Yes. This might be a good option for me. And, you know, funds and alternative investments and what we do, they're not going to be a good fit for everybody. Right. And we don't want anybody who's in our deals that it's not a good fit for. So you have to vet the opportunity for yourself personally. But, yeah. It is definitely something that's helpful when you're raising capital and it's easier to have those conversations. You can open the door more you know, to those conversations. It's interesting you say this, Vina. I have a friend who who they have a big fund and their clients are pro football players. Yep. Okay. So that was going to be the, my next example, okay. right? The pro athlete. Yeah. Right. This they're a great example, right? Because they're making all this cash. They don't know what to do with it. Right. And they're usually younger, right? Mm -hmm. When they're making money. And this is very much the opposite of a physician. Yeah. Right? Because So you're saying you're speaking totally different language. Right. So if I go to a pro athlete and I'm talking about like, oh, you can save for your kids' college fund, you can get out <laughs> of your job. Like this is not their biggest They don't pain even have point. kids, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. They don't they're not worried about these same things that physicians are and physicians want slow and steady. They're not risk takers. Pro athletes are significantly more risk tolerant, yeah. right? Just by choice of profession it's hard on your body you never know when like a broken bone is going to take you out yeah. entirely right and so when you're talking to a pro athlete if that's your avatar right then you're talking to them and i could say to a pro athlete if you give me your money and i do nothing with it i leave it in the bank and don't touch it and then give it back to you you will still come out ahead than if you kept your own money Right. And why is that true? Because we know that the vast majority of pro athletes end up broke. Yeah. Because 80% are bankrupt. 80% are bankrupt within five years of retirement. And why is that? Because the managers come out, the childhood friends come out, everybody who wants to help them, all the good business ideas come out. Right. And well intentioned and ill intentioned people are now coming and trying to take that money. And a lot of times, pro athletes, are maybe the first in their family, right? And they might yeah. be the first generation to have that level of wealth. Well, and let's be honest, um, learning money is is a- Foreign is a, concept. Yeah, it's a time thing, right? So the more you do it, the more you get better yeah. at it. A windfall of money is often very dangerous, dangerous. Because you don't know how to manage money yet. Absolutely. I mean, it's the it's same reason skill. that neither of us are leaving a windfall of money to our children. Yeah. Because neither of us want our kids to all of a sudden have all this money and not have an incentive to work. And yeah. it's dangerous. It's same as a lottery winner. It's very similar. Very dangerous. Yeah, a lot of them go broke. Yeah. Right? So you're changing the conversation when you're talking to a pro athlete. And so now I'm talking about, hey, listen, you don't know when it's your last game. Let me help you create stability beyond this 5, 10, 15, maybe 20-year career if you're lucky. Yeah. Right? Let me put your money to work. Let me build this in the background. You don't have to do anything to build that. So that avatar is completely different, right? That I'm speaking to. So when you're thinking about an investor avatar, you're thinking about everything. And I have a workbook that we'll include in the- We can put that in the kit? kit. Yes. Okay, will. guys, we have a kit that Vina has put together with a lot of free resources. Yes. It's totally amazing. And she's giving this away for free. Yes. And, and we're talking guys, you know, thousands of dollars in Nick in our live audience yes. that you've seen in previous videos, you know, she's paid to figure these things out and this, you can't get this stuff anywhere else. And she's, no. so be sure to leave a comment and say, thank you, Vina, for the free resources. This is amazing. Yes. But what is in that workbook? What does that help you identify yeah. your avatar? So what it is, is it's, it'll take you about, if you really spend time doing it, it'll take you like 45 to 60 minutes to go through it. And I think it's like 50 questions. Okay, and what it's designed to do is to get you to narrow in on who your investor avatar is. So it's helping you identify the avatar yes. you want to target. Yeah, because there's okay. no one right answer, right? Yeah. Like you might be going and raising capital from like people who own ranches in Montana. That might be your avatar. Yeah. 
that's probably not my avatar mm-hmm. today, right? And here's the thing about investor avatars. You start with like one, maybe two investor avatars. You get really good at speaking to them. And then the more you do it and the more you do it, the more avatars you can add into your capital raise. So now, I so I, I was trying to calculate this last night in time for us to record mm-hmm. this and I did not do it properly because I couldn't get through everything. But in the last three years, we've raised over $200 million in three years. That's incredible. Okay, so yeah. that means that 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023, three and a half years, we've raised $200 million from retail investors. That means we're not going to like Blackstone or whatever. It's like people like you and I. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to think about what the most impactful way to share with your audience, yeah. right? How, how did I do it? Like Nick and I talked last night for an hour and I was like, okay, but how did I do this? But how, but how, mm-hmm. but how? And we kept diving deeper and deeper into it. And really it started with this investor avatar and knowing and understanding it. I didn't have this workbook when I first started raising. I actually was doing the, I just need rich people thing. Yeah. It's not very good. No. It really, it sounds great, but it's not great. So Vina, I mean, how do is so this workbook it'll help you identify who might be your best avatar and then and now you can say okay i'm going to now go directly to this type of person yes. i'm going to learn really really well what matters to them yep. and that's going to facilitate me being able to raise money but also i think like let's say that you knowing this avatar yeah. idea let's say that you're on the plane mm-hmm. and you sit next to somebody and they end up being somebody not that's in your wheelhouse but with if you know that there's a certain thing that matters to people, yes. could you adjust on the fly Absolutely. if you understand the main reasons Absolutely. why people invest? Absolutely. And you should have that skill set, but that's a skill that comes later down the road. It's very yeah. hard to do up front. And so what you want to do is you want to take every opportunity you can to practice. Like you should be pitching to everybody. Asking for money from everybody, everybody you come in contact with. Everybody. Yeah. So when I first did my first raise, it was $1.2 million. Mm-hmm. And I had six weeks to raise it, which is crazy to me now because like I can raise $1.2 million in a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's so wild to look back in the rear view yeah. and see like how far I've come. Um, but so I cried myself to sleep every night for six weeks. And this is a true story, by the way. Every single night I was like in tears. I thought I put my family into like financial ruin. what were you ruin. panicking about? What was so stressful? I didn't think I was going to be able to close a deal. So I thought we were going to lose all of our earnest money. I thought mm. I had ruined my reputation forever with brokers because they would never sell to me ever again. Because you'd have to break up the deal? Yeah. Yeah. And they always say the kiss of death is a retrade, which is a fancy word of saying like a kiss of death is falling out of escrow. Yeah. And there's so few multifamily brokers, which is I buy multifamily. I have one trick. That's the trick I do. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm ruining this massive brokerage relationship in Dallas, which is my home market in the multifamily world where there's like four multifamily brokers that really transact on 80% of the deals. And you were worried you weren't weren't going to be able to raise the money to do the deal. To close the deal. Which you'd already committed that you were going to close the deal because you went under contract. No, no, no. I didn't commit. (laughs) I straight up lied. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. I was like, they're like, okay, so, you know, are you capitalized? Do you have the money? I was like, Psh, yeah, this is easy. We got this. Um, it was a $15.9 million deal we were buying. And the 1.2 million was the part that was my responsibility. And nobody wanted to give me any money. Like everybody said to me, come back to me on your second deal. This sounds great. I'm in for the next one. Or even worse, they would be like, I'm in. And then never hear from oh, yeah, them again. That's the common, ghost. Yeah. Oh, it was very painful. I've learned a lot of things since then. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, there was a time in that six week period where you know I was in my like daily cry at night. <laughs> like, <laughs> what did I do? I ruined my life. And then I woke my husband up from being like a deep sleep. It was like two a.m. And I was like, <laughs> honey. I have to sell everything we own. I'm going to sell our all our house. I'm going to sell our 401ks. I'm selling your Porsche. And he was like, whoa, <laughs> what? You went too far. Uh, yeah, he's like, he's like, shoot straight up in bed. He's like, what are we talking about, right? And he was like, 
okay, you're obviously sleep talking, go back to sleep, which I do talk in my sleep. So (laughs) it wouldn't have been unusual, but I was not in this case. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, listen, I'm really sorry that I did this to us because I felt so responsible Mm -hmm. because, you know, he's going, he's working hard and he's Mm -hmm. got a very stressful, demanding job. And I just ruined everything that he's worked for to this day. Like that's, that was the story Mm -hmm. I'm telling in my mind. And I tell him, I was like, I need $1.2 million and we don't have that. By next Friday. Right. Basically. And he was like, okay, if that's what we have to do, then that's what we have to do. But you still can't sell the Porsche. Yeah. I was like, great, we'll just live out of your Porsche since I have to sell our house and we'll be like, you know, turtles with our house on our back. I don't know. And so, uh, but he said, but listen, we'll do whatever we have to do to make sure you're successful at this. But I don't think that this is going to be a problem. I know you can do this. You have to go, you know, back to the drawing board. And he kind of like, he, you know, that's like 97% yeah. of the reason I married him is because he's like so stable and uh-huh. rational and logical. So like to the total opposite of me. Yeah. And he was like very much my rock in that moment. And I was like, okay. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, okay, let me make all of these. Other- I was like, you know, you know, people who do like MLMs where they like message you on Facebook after 25 years, you haven't spoken. And they're like, invite you to dinner. Yeah. They're yeah. like, Oh my gosh, you look like you're doing amazing. You would be really great for this new business that I'm running. And mm. you're like, Oh gosh, that's basically what I did. Mm. I went back to like the people that I like ate lunch with in third grade. And I was like, <laughs> Hey Susie, we haven't talked in 25 years. You look amazing. <laughs> So I also have this deal, <laughs> right? Like that's what we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, spoiler alert, we ended up closing the deal and the investors that believed in us and took that risk on us ended up making us like crazy return. They made like 25% annualized. This was a multifamily deal? Yes, so yeah. multifamily. We sold, so we bought it for 15.9. We sold it for 24 million three years later. So made so a nice the one, the 1. 1.2 was to, was a gap fund? Yeah. Okay. It was, uh, it was an, a part of the equity. Okay. Um, And it, so when we do our deals, we do value add. So we have to mm-hmm. raise for like the equity, which is the down payment, right? In multifamily is called the equity. And then we had to bring, you know, our fees, our operating account, Counts, the CapEx budget, which is our rehab budget to add the value. So that makes more sense why it was so stressful. It wasn't a 1.2 million deal. No. 1.2 was what you needed to make yes. the, to pull the deal off. Yes. It was a 15 million? Uh, it was 16, almost 16 million. 16 million dollar deal. So that's a lot on the line, big expectations. Yes. Yes. You know. But I think it would have been just as stressful if there was a zero removed and mm-hmm. I was raising $120,000 because the reality is, is if you need $10,000 and you can't raise it, it's a problem. Well, if that means the deal is a go or a no go, right. you know, it's it a doesn't big really problem. matter anymore. Right. right. Exactly. How much it is exactly. It kills the deal if you don't. Right. And I'm the type of person to, you know, I'm the daughter of immigrants. So I'm like, I don't want to lose $10, let alone. Well, like hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. And we've confirmed that you had a 4.0 in high it's school. It's not so. true. This, <laughs> you know what? Like Spencer, like one of these people that is like, expo- does the exposés is going to be like, Fina Jetty is lying about a 4.0 GPA. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to order transcripts from Naperville Central. <laughs> That's funny. But going back to the avatars, it's was that when you started to define, hey, I need to be really clear about no. who I'm going to? No, I wish it was. No, but I mean, you didn't. But I didn't at what point for years. You, at what point did that make a big transition in your fundraising? Like yesterday. I <laughs> This is something that I learned, oh gosh, I must have been eight or 10 funds in. Before you started to see how important Before that was. I realized that this was even a thing I should have been doing. Now, I will say like probably fund four through eight, four through 10, I was inherently doing it, but I didn't realize that this was like such a succinct succinct and clear thing that I was already doing. So, you know, it's one of those things I was doing it based off of like learning and I was inadvertently doing it and subconsciously doing it. But it wasn't until probably like eight to 10 funds in that I was like, oh, light bulb moment. I should have been doing this from the beginning. And had I done it, it would have been so much clearer. So now I do this And now, you know, like I said, it changes as you do it more, you can add more investor avatars, right? And you just get better at it. It doesn't get easier. It's not easier to raise $1.2 million today. 
I'm just better at doing it. So I'm just, I'm just thinking here, like, let's say somebody, you know, they're getting into real estate. Maybe they've been in a corporate white collar mm-hmm. environment for 10 years would maybe self-directed IRA or like IRA, totally. corporate IRA, Absolutely. would that be like an avatar? Yes. And these are people that have money that maybe yep. they'll put in real estate. Yeah. You know, what are some other avatars that you've seen are kind of common avatars? Yeah. So I always tell people, start with the people that you already are similar to in whatever way, right? So a, a mom who wants to get into this space might be active in her PTA, Or she might have, she might be like a stay at home mom and Mm. have other stay at home moms that she networks with, right? And that could be a way she could get into this space. So, or or you could have tech workers, right? So, like engineers or IT, right? You could talk to people who do a lot of crypto trading. You could talk to. If you're an engineer, maybe you go to engineers, go target engineers, financial advisors, lawyers, uh, other real estate investors family offices, like all of these are different avatars and you're going to have a different messaging. The broader message of real estate, the broader message of multifamily or hotels or whatever your asset class, those are going to stay the same. But how you speak about those things and in what order and what you prioritize speaking about depends on who you're speaking to. Because people are going to invest in a fund. They're going to put money into a fund based on the things that matter to them in their life, Correct. interest return or whatever Correct. is down the list probably. I mean, yes, I think that returns on on investment are probably lower on the list for accredited investors than unaccredited or sophisticated investors. And, and why is that? Because they have a tax Because they don't have the same problems. Yeah, yeah they problems. don't they're not living off of this cash flow. They're not going to notice if they have an extra 500 or 1000 dollars in their bank account. Yeah. Whereas a sophisticated or an unaccredited investor is likely to notice that. Yeah. Right? And so, okay, even when I was talking to you this morning about this deal I have and seeing if you want to infuse mm-hmm. capital, I would. I didn't say anything about the returns. You actually don't know what any of the returns are. Mm-hmm. What were the two things I told taxes. you about? Yeah. yeah, I told you one about taxes. I yeah. can solve your tax problem because I, I know you have a tax problem, yeah. right? But the second thing I mentioned to you is Apple has a billion dollar campus 20 minutes away. Why did I say that to you? Because I know that you're a real estate guy. You care about location. You mm-hmm. want to know why is this location better? You know why apartments are good. Yeah. I don't have to explain that to you, right? Yeah. But I need to explain to you very quickly in one sentence why this location like is a great high. location. Yeah. yeah, location. Right, so mm. I'm de-risking it in your mind by telling you about that. Mm. And normally I would never tell someone that is, I'm looking to invest with mm-hmm. me, the like secret sauce about why I'm mm-hmm. speaking about certain things, but I know that these are important things to you when I'm presenting you an opportunity. And so I want to make sure I'm talking to the things that are important to you, not the things that are important to the next person that I talk to and about. That's it. the point. Understanding yep. and having an avatar yes. so that when you go to raise money, you say the things that right. matter to the right person. Right. Because you was, don't have a long time to talk to them. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, when we were masterminding, I said to you, I'm having a really hard time getting my regular investors to want to come to Puerto Rico and invest in Puerto Rico. And you said to me, you said, you're talking to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. You're talking to the wrong person. And it clicked. I I was like, oh yeah, I'm talking to the wrong person about coming to Puerto Rico. I need to be talking to this type of person. They're not going to care that it's Puerto Rico and the nuances of that. No. Right. Because the people I'm talking to, they're like, okay, well show me comps and how do I understand value? And that's, that's the wrong person. Wrong person. And so that's why it's important to understand who your avatar is. So if you had gone through the workbook, right, and you were like, okay, this is who I'm speaking to, you can then go to the places where you need to speak to them, right? And we're, we're going to tie back to this workbook a lot in our future videos too. So when you go through this workbook, it's going to ask you to envision an investor, right? And it's going to say like, what's their name? How old are they? What race are they? What religion are they? Are they married or single? Where do they live? What's their job? What's their educational background what are their hobbies where do they hang out and it feels kind of like dumb to like think about like this imaginary person and go Mm -hmm. through it but the point of the exercise is to think about who you are talking to and then knowing where those people are Mm -hmm. right because it's fine if you know you're talking to like this avatar but if you can't actually get in front of them then who cares yeah that's great awesome so that's in that workbook yeah. And this is a, an important lead up to our next video yes. that we want to talk about, which is some of the steps to start to to do your first fund. Yes. Right? And yeah. so 
you you told me before we recorded this video, well, you have to know who you're going to talk to before you go talk to them. Yes. And that's why this video is so critical, understanding that avatar. Yes. So I love that, Vina. Thank yes. you for breaking that down. Yes. Guys, we're going to put uh, the link to that free resource. It's a kit. There'll be multiple things in there. So just one link will get you access to that so that you can download that, start using these tools. Um, hopefully you're getting a ton of value out of this. Be sure to leave a comment and say thank you, Vina, for sharing all of this wisdom of course. and um, giving these free resources. We'll put your um, information too to follow you on social media and other things. And uh, and then we're going to keep moving along in this series, in this playlist. Yes. So look for other videos. There's a link for a playlist to all of this, all of these videos. We recommend that you watch them in order because yes. we're trying to release this content in this in the order that you would need to yes. you know move in that direction so yeah. awesome Vina thank All you right. thank you everybody and we'll see you on the next video